Welcome to The Verdict. My name is Kent Myers. Mick Cornett is gone again this week, but we'll be back soon, I am sure. I'm not just teasing you about that. He will be back. Uh, Mick is busy on the campaign trail, but uh, that will come to an end pretty quickly and we'll get to join each other again in these shows. Uh, we're going to be talking today about something we haven't talked about before, and that is the importance of the arts in secondary school or high school or upper school, however you choose to uh, refer to it. We've had shows about education and its obvious importance. We've had uh, shows about sports and its impact on the student. And today we're going to take a little different approach and talk about the arts in secondary school, why it's important, uh, what uh, the kids get out of participating in the arts and how that can help them for many, many years in the life after they have graduated from secondary school. We've got a very qualified person to talk to you about that and we'll visit with him in just a minute. You're watching The Verdict. I'll be right back. At Chesapeake Energy, here's a few of our favorite hornets. Alexis likes reading. Sam enjoys history. Alec loves math. Chesapeake is proud to support both the Oklahoma City NBA Hornets and the Young Hornets at Horace Mann Elementary, where over 150 Chesapeake employees mentor to children each week. The students gain a lot from the experience, but not as much as we do. Chesapeake Energy, committed to building a better Oklahoma. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. Come on, come on, come on, baby, come on, baby, come on, baby. Go, 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 don't live in satellite denial. Get the reliability you expect from Cox, your friend in the digital age. Ed is too. There you go. Cox Communications está buscando empleados entusiásticos y motivados. Disfruta de nuestros beneficios, pago competitivo, grandes ventajas y oportunidades para el adelanto. Si desea hacer una diferencia, tenemos un lugar para usted aquí con Cox Communications. Visítanos en el internet o llame para ver qué oportunidades tenemos para usted aquí en Cox. Ed is too. Cox Communications está orgulloso de ofrecer igualdad de empleos. Welcome back to The Verdict. Kent Myers uh, with a young man I want to introduce. He's been a friend for many years, uh, known him personally and his family. Uh, on my right is Jay Ferguson. Jay is at the Heritage Hall, is the Associate Director of Performing Arts at Heritage Hall. He's a Heritage Hall graduate of 1996. Uh, grew up in Oklahoma City and uh, has been involved in the arts community, the performing arts community, virtually all his life. Uh, after graduation from Heritage Hall, he spent 10 years in Los Angeles as a professional actor on such shows as uh, ER, JAG, uh, Charmed, and the like. You've probably seen him. Uh, it, I don't know whether ER they had you covered with a sheet or not, but uh, <laughs> he has been on, the, on a number of uh, shows. Uh, he's, he's back, however, in Oklahoma City, and as I indicated, has uh, assumed the position of Associate uh, Director of the Performing Arts at Heritage Hall, and we're going to talk with Jay today about the importance of the performing arts in the lives of our young people. Jay, welcome to The Verdict. Thank you so much for having me. It is so nice to see you. I can remember seeing you when you were, I think, in the eighth grade. and uh, <laughs> You showed uh, uh, me around the school and was very, very uh, good at doing that and very poised. And nothing has changed except you've become more so. Uh, well, we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your job at Heritage Hall. What's that involved? Um, well, I, uh, this is my first year there. Uh, working as a, a full-time employee or an actual faculty member rather and uh, my job pretty much 
entails anything that is strictly performance related with the kids. It's my forte. And so I have three major musical productions a year that I head up. Uh, and there are probably half a dozen or so others that I have my fingers in and help all of my, uh, all of my colleagues out with. Um, some smaller middle school programs, Christmas concerts, things like that. Um, and really, my job is just there being part of the team and part of the family there in trying to uh, make it a really wonderful, special learning atmosphere for the kids. Well, tell us about your background in the arts. You, you uh, grew up uh, here in Oklahoma mm -hmm. City and involved in lyric and other Absolutely, things. Absolutely, yeah. My first, uh, my first acting role was at Lyric Theater in Peter Pan when I was about six years old. And, you know, to have that as a first major experience in the arts, uh, that was pretty incredible because I got to fly and fight pirates and <laughs> I, I thought that that's what the performing arts were all about. So I was, uh, I was hooked for life. I definitely have uh, Lyric Theater to thank for that. And uh, just grew from there. I started uh, getting involved more with uh, the educational opportunities at my school as far as the performing arts went. Started uh, exploring other sort of community groups and um, yeah, I was very heavily involved uh, throughout high school until I, uh, until I went off to California. Well, tell us about that a little bit. Well, um, I worked for almost 10 years as an actor in California, uh, just on various TV shows and uh, films and so on and so forth, uh, just sort of living the life, really uh, finding out what it was to be a professional actor. And I just, I love the experience that I had doing that because it's really informed uh, my situation right now, teaching young people and sort of, uh, sort of their, you know, those select few that really do aspire to have careers in the arts, I feel that I can really give them a leg up and so. And what brought yeah. you back to Oklahoma? Uh, really, it was just a matter of wanting to uh, teach, uh, wanting to, uh, there were some opportunities available here and I decided that um, this was something else that I had kind of always wanted to do. So. Um, I came back and set up shop. Well, she'll probably kill us both for doing this, but <laughs> let's talk a little bit about an individual called Billy Lewis. Yes. Tell our viewers just briefly who uh, Billy Lewis is and what impact she had on your life. Well, uh, Billy Lewis is kind of a legend, actually not kind of, she is a legend around our school as far as um, just the influence that she had over so many lives as uh, she was my mentor and a uh, teacher there at Heritage Hall for uh, almost 30 years, if it wasn't. In the performing arts. In area. the performing arts, yes. Yeah, she was yeah. the head of the department there at the time and uh, the time that I was there and that my brothers were there and so many others. Um, and nobody really, I mean, talk about, and I don't mean this to sound completely negative, but talk about someone who was taken for granted. There was so much that she made work at that school behind the scenes that so much work that no one ever saw that now I'm in the same position <laughs> and I do look to her on a regular basis. Um, we're still very close and still friends. Uh, I really look to her just for guidance and saying, wow, this is a lot. We she have a lot a, on our plate. She had a significant impact on your life. Absolutely. And uh, I suspect you kind of hope to be able to be in the same position for other young people. I hope so. Yeah, um, something that I appreciated about her and uh, the rest of my instructors there at Heritage Hall is um, they really, they found what my individual needs were. They were really able to meet my needs um, and, and at a certain point that, because I had, of course, an extreme interest in the arts. I wanted every free period to be filled with chorus or drama or some aspect of, of the arts. Um, 
that's not necessarily the case with all kids. You know, sure. I've, I have probably a handful of students that that is what they want to do with their lives. But what I love so much about my teachers there is they were able to create programs that adapted to all of the kids, um, whether it was just something that they felt that they wanted to try um, or maybe they were less talented, maybe their focus was somewhere else, but they enjoyed the camaraderie of singing in the choir, uh, whatever the specific situation was. And I was as unique a situation as, you know, an athlete who can't catch a tune with two left feet because of, like I said, my, my focus in that department. And they were really able to nurture me to uh, give me opportunities that I wouldn't have otherwise had, I think. Well, <clears throat> We hear a lot about the importance of academics to later life. We hear a lot about the importance of sports and developing mm -hmm. teamwork and uh, camaraderie and the like. What do you see as the importance of the arts to the young person for later life? Well, um, gosh, it's, it's not just me. I mean, it has been proven over and over again that that kids that are involved in the arts in their um, high school, their junior high, middle school, whatever uh, careers, that they are statistically stronger academically. They ultimately become stronger citizens, uh, more productive in society. Uh, so there are certainly those statistics that you can look at and say how important that is. But when you're actually there on the front lines seeing the unlikely suspects, seeing the athletes, <laughs> seeing the more introverted kids get up there and take a risk, um, get up on stage, or just discover what they are really capable of. To see a kid discover that he or she is more capable than they thought they were, that they didn't, that they had no idea what they could accomplish in a situation like that, a situation that's kind of foreign, the answer is right there. And that's gonna carry over throughout the rest of their lives, uh, just as far as meeting any sort of challenges that they're gonna have. Let me jump in here and get us to a break. We're visiting yeah. with Jay Ferguson, the Associate Director of Performing Arts at Heritage Hall about the importance of arts uh, to young people, and we'll be right back. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And Blankenship has stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Leaving it fourth and seven on the Tiger for the six-yard line. 38 seconds on the clock, and the Tigers have no choice but to go for it. Wiggins in to do the kicking. Here's the snap. R.S.M. McGladry. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. R.S.M. McGladry. In Oklahoma City, the phone number is 405-843-5311. The Cox Channel. More sports. More bands. More cheerleaders. More fun. Nobody does more local sports. And nobody does it better. Not sure where you're headed? NATS can help you find your way. It's the National Athletic Testing System. We call it NATS. You'll call it your launching pad to success. 
NATS will give you a standardized evaluation that will help you measure your performance and give that information to college coaches so they can accurately evaluate your potential. NATS also helps with academic support. Join with the Oklahoma High School Football Coaches Association and head for success at www.nats.us. Welcome back. Uh, we're visiting with Jay Ferguson, the Associate Director of Performing Arts at Heritage Hall, about the importance of arts in the lives of young people. Uh, just how young can a, can a young person be to get started, and, and how does the interest vary as they get older? Well, um, it's, that's really a tough question as far as when, when do you start uh, your own kids. I mean, when do you start a kid playing t-ball or... Uh, something of, of that nature. Uh, it really depends on the individual and where their, where their interests are. Uh, I think that ideally we could expose our kids to a variety of different things and see where their own hearts lie, where their interests are. Um, I think it's really important that as young as possible uh, in, you know, in preschool, in kindergarten, and elementary school that we do expose uh, our kids to a certain amount of, give them that opportunity to be exposed to the arts. My experience with, with children uh, is that uh, uh, they seem to be more ready to do it the younger they are. Absolutely. They aren't worried about what their peers are going to think about them or whether their voice is good or not. They well, like to get up on stage and perform. And absolutely. You, and that wanes as they get older. It does. and Breaking through those walls and those inhibitions of the older kids is probably when I'm actually working with them, what I do 60% of the time. Kent, I could probably ask you to jump up on this table and bark like a dog for me in some sort of improvisation exercise, and you'd probably be a little hesitant to do it, I'm guessing. Well, I Mick, Mick accuses me of doing <laughs> that every once in a while, but go I, ahead. I, I would too, for that matter. <laughs> but if I had a motivated six-year-old yeah. or seven-year-old and asked them to do that, they would probably think that that sounded like a great idea and a fun game to do. And so uh, anyhow, the idea is that the earlier we get them comfortable with that, the earlier we uh, tell them that they can take those risks and that it can be fun, that the easier it's going to be for us to well, get them to take those kinds of risks in, in the middle school and upper school years. The, uh, the uh, middle school is tough, I suspect, to get them to involve because all of a sudden they're worried about what their peers think. Well, I'll tell you what, the middle school is the firing line. That is, <laughs> that's where uh, it is really important that we uh, dig our claws in because that's where a lot of social anxiety yeah. is naturally being developed in kids. Adolescence. Um, yes, absolutely. It's, it's a really tough time, but it's also the time where kids are developing uh, what their adult skills will be and their adult interest uh, that they will carry on through high school and through the rest of their lives, yet they still have a hint of that inhibition. Um, they still, uh, we can still get them to do certain things like that. Let me focus on the middle school and the in, in parental involvement a little bit. Um, is it important to the child that the parent uh, support and encourage the participation in the arts just as much as they support playing t-ball or playing basketball or, or the like? Yeah, yes, I, w I would say so. It, of course, again, it depends on where the interest of the student lies. Yes. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't make a gifted athlete suffer through a basketball class anymore. I would take a gifted dancer, you know, ask them to play basketball, um, there are certain occasions in which that's appropriate. I think we need to expose kids to sports um, because what a wonderful, it's a very similar experience as far as learning teamwork and, and life skills uh, that the arts provides. Um, but uh, as far as really forcing that on anyone, I think, I think it's more about exposure and yes, supporting those, supporting those interests. In the middle school and the upper school, you, you encourage kids to participate and you, I'm sure you hear a lot, well, I can't sing, I can't right. dance, mm -hmm. how can I be involved? What do you say? How, how do, do you, you get them involved? How do you know? <laughs> um, we really try and uh, when, when kids show interest, that's great. 
but also there is an aspect of, in, like I said, encouraging kids to take risks. We had, we just did a fantastic musical at Heritage Hall um, that we had such a diverse group of kids up there and there were so many wonderful singers in the show that had no idea they could be singers. So my question is, how do you know? Yeah. You know, why don't we, it, it's my job, it's the job of my colleagues to be able to sit a kid down and listen to them sing and hitting bad notes and you know, not being comfortable with their voice and recognizing the potential in that. So that's what we try and do. And we try and uh, create a comfortable environment for kids to make mistakes too. What, uh, what is the impact, if any, of community theater on uh, the uh, child's or young adult's interest? Well, it certainly had a great impact on me. Um, it is wonderful when we can take kids who um, show some, some talent or some, some major interest, and when you can put them in a situation that is completely focused on that all the time, any sort of uh, summer community theater opportunities, um, any sort of, and it's, it's not even just the theater, it's uh, organizations like uh, the Oklahoma Summer Arts Institute is a fantastic experience for kids um, that do have an interest in the arts because they get together with people that aren't focused necessarily on uh, getting to football practice later on that day. They're in choir for that hour, but they have to get to football practice or they have a big test due. When you get a group of kids or a group of people together that are completely focused on, on the arts, and it's, it's a wonderful experience for, for a kid to, again, show them what can be accomplished. Uh, growing up in Oklahoma City uh, a long time ago, uh, my brother and I both uh, had to uh, take music lessons, mm -hmm. take a musical instrument lesson, mm -hmm. and I don't think I knew very many that didn't have to because mm -hmm. the parents said, you will take piano or right. you will uh, play the clarinet in the band or right. whatever it may be. Right. Uh, is that valueless or does that have some value in and of itself, even if you don't pursue it beyond the, the uh, initial learning stage? Well, ab absolutely it has value. Um, not only the skills that you learn doing something, the, the critical thinking skills, uh, even if you show absolutely no talent towards uh, music theory or towards piano or anything like that, um, just branching out b beyond your comfort zone, uh, I think is, is really important for all kids. I mean, you know, I, I, can, I hate to turn back to the same answer, but it probably has as much value as I got out of playing Little League, yeah. or that I got out of being in the Boy Scouts or taking a gym class, way out of my comfort zone. However, I had to learn how to deal with that. I learned so many things by being involved in a diverse number of things. So. Well, if you were advising a young person now uh, that is thinking about either majoring in the arts in college mm -hmm. or trying to pursue a professional career either mm -hmm. after college or before, right. what would you tell them? Um, I would tell them to, number one, uh, re research where they're going to spend that time, uh, where beyond the shadow of a doubt they know they're going to the right place. And often, um, ju often just a school's reputation or say um, their uh, list of alumni who have uh, become leaders in the arts, uh, that's not always appropriate uh, when you're taking it to the next level just because an arts education, it is, when you get to that level, so individual. Yeah. Um, so I would say that, you know, uh, someone who showed interest in pursuing a career as an actor, they're gonna get a great education at Juilliard or you know, Yale. However, they might get a more appropriate education at UCO. I'm sorry, Jay, no, I have to interrupt, no we're problem. out of time. Thank no you very problem. much. We'll have you back and explain the phrase break a leg. Uh, thank time. you very We've much. We've been Kat. visiting with Jay Ferguson. Let's take a break.
As someone who works in Oklahoma's oil and natural gas industry, I know how hard we're working to meet our current energy needs. But there are a few things all of us can do to reduce the amount of energy we use, starting right around the house. A tiny 1 16th inch gap between the door and frame is the same as leaving the window open three inches. A little weather stripping can help that. It's amazing how putting a little effort in can keep a lot of energy from getting out. For more energy saving ideas, visit OERB.com. This is a message for all you guys out there who aren't afraid of a little hard work. Right now, the oil and gas industry has over 700 job openings right here in Oklahoma. We're talking jobs with salaries from twenty to $60,000. Jobs with excellent benefits, flexible schedules, even free training. So check out oilfieldjobsok.com or call 877-655-5677 to find out about great opportunities for hardworking guys like you. Just keep it. Thank you. Dr. Kessler? What's up with the pizzas? Well, I just got my first satellite bill, and those extra fees were a bit of a shocker. So I had to take a second job. Hey, this was supposed to be pepperoni, Dillweed. Hey, it's Dr. Dillweed to you. Whatever. <laughs> it's... It's cool, eh? You know, I'm a people person. Don't live in satellite denial. Get all your entertainment without the hidden charges from Cox, your friend in the digital age. Ed is through. There you go. Cox Communications está buscando empleados entusiásticos y motivados. Disfruta de nuestros beneficios, pago competitivo, grandes ventajas y oportunidades para el adelante. Si desea hacer una diferencia, tenemos un lugar para usted aquí con Cox Communications. Visítanos en el internet o llame para ver qué oportunidades tenemos para usted aquí en Cox. Eres tú. Cox Communications está orgulloso de ofrecer igualdad de empleos. Thanks to Jay Ferguson for visiting with us about the importance of the arts to the young person. Next week we'll be talking to Mike Terry and Jeremy Rich about what's going on in the oil fields. And uh, please get on our website, theverdict.tv, and let us know what you uh, would like to see or hear on our show. For Mick Cornett, I'm Kent Myers. We'll see you next week. The preceding program was produced by the Production Services Group at Cox Communications, exclusively for the Cox Channel.